Hello everybody, I welcome you back to this series of presentations on design of tension members. This is the fifth session that we are trying to discuss in design of tension members. I am sure the previous four sessions were interesting. Uh, in this particular session basically, okay, we would be trying to do some numerical examples. Let us quickly recollect what we had discussed okay, in the previous sessions first and then we will start the numerical problems. So, let us see what we had discussed in the previous sessions. So, we had finished the introductory uh, remark with respect to axially tension members, factors influencing the strength of member, three important modes of uh, tension failure, then design strength of tension member, how do we calculate okay, the design force with respect to these three failure modes, and a very important concept of shear lag, especially in case of eccentric connections okay, and how we normally do the design of lug angle which tries to overcome okay, the shear lag effect to, to a great extent. Followed with it, we had started numerical examples in my previous uh, session. So, we had discussed uh, two numerical examples that is design of tension member, especially for plates. Today, we shall try to go ahead and continue with more examples. Okay. Now, this is the problem that we are trying to talk about in today's class. Okay. So, we have an unequal uh, angle which is single of size 175 by 8. It is an unequal angle that we have here. So, the size of uh, the two legs are 100 mm and 75 mm. The thickness is 8 mm. It is connected to a 12 mm thick gazette plate. Okay. And uh, the number of uh, bolts that we have in the connection is given. So, 6 in number, you can clearly see those 6 bolts here, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. And uh, uh, we are trying to find okay, that uh, uh, what is the uh, design strength of this particular uh, connection. Now, other, another important information is okay, obviously the uh, 100 mm leg okay, is connected to the gazette plate. So, when you just try to see unequal leg angles, we normally try to connect the larger leg or longer leg to the gusset plate is what you need to understand. And coming to the uh, yield strength and uh, ultimate strength of the material, it is given as uh, uh, 250 mega Pascals and 400 mega Pascals. Okay. And finally, the bolts that have been used okay, is of diameter 20 mm. So, I hope you have understood the picture here. That is, this is the gusset plate that we have here, okay, this shape and this is the uh, ISA angle that we have here, ISA correct and it is going to transfer a tensile force over there, correct. So, all the uh, dimensions that is the end distance, the pitch okay, and uh, the uh, center line of the bolts okay, in this direction. Okay, this is the thickness of the plate that is 12 mm and that is the uh, leg of the shorter leg that is 75 mm. Okay, so, this is the sectional elevation okay, that is cross section and this is sectional elevation. I hope the problem is very clear. So, we are just trying to find what is the maximum tensile capacity that this uh, particular section can resist. Okay. Now, as you know that is we have done this uh, uh, steps okay, even in the previous problem where we had discussed okay, the tensile strength of the plate. Correct. Now, we are just trying to repeat the same uh, slide here. So, you can understand that uh, okay, so for uh, uh, the design strength of the angle. Correct. So, we are trying to calculate Okay, the design strength based on these three failure criteria that is gross section uh, yielding correct and then net section rupture and finally, the block shear failure. Having done this, we are trying to take the minimum value okay, of these three values correct. We try to take the minimum values of this. So, that means every time we assume that it may fail in this mode or in this mode or in this mode. And then you go on calculating these values and obviously, the actual value will be the least of the three. Okay. So, let us try to go and start the calculation with respect to the first mode of failure which is nothing but yielding of gross section or gross section yielding. Correct. So, that is the first mode and we are trying to use the class that is 6.2. Correct. So, what does 6.2 give you? 
okay it tries to tell you how to calculate the design strength okay of the given uh, uh, member it could be plate or it could be angle with respect to gross section yielding so the formula is td is equal to fi ag by gamma m not correct so please understand something but stress multiplied by area that is a force and you are trying to yeah divided by the partial set factor whose value is more than 1 to reduce the value of the force correct okay so for the given for the current problem let's try to understand what these things are okay so if you just try to look at the value so 250 mega pascals has been given and please understand okay how do you get the value of ag so if you just try to recollect so we had given you the dimension of the section correct the section dimension in this particular case if we just try to recollect so it is nothing but 100 by okay 75 by 8 100 by 75 by 8 so that is the section okay that we have here so if you just try to open your steel tables correct so you can easily get this value correct you can easily get this value okay from steel tables with respect to uh, the unequal angle 175 by 8 okay and the value of area is 1336 millimeter square and please understand whenever we're just trying to talk about fi gamma m naught or m0 so which is 1.10 so all you're supposed to do is substitute these numbers here simplify okay and get the value uh, obviously you'll get the value in uh, newton uh, newtons okay i'm just trying to uh, express the value in kilonewtons so the design tensile strength with respect to the first failure criteria that is gross cross section yielding okay happens to be okay 303.64 kilonewtons okay is what you have here okay so let us just try to go ahead and then go to the next uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, failure correct the next kind of failure okay that we are trying to have here is okay net section rupture correct so when we just talk about the net section rupture correct so it is based on clause 6.2 correct 6.2 correct i'm sorry it should be 6.3 right it should be 6.3 if i'm correct okay 6.3 now in this particular case okay so for especially for angle you need to understand correct so for angle so we are just trying to use this particular formula tdn equal to that is design strength due to net rupture equal to there are two terms that we have here okay this is the first term that we have here and that is the second term that we have here so we just try to notice this properly okay the first one okay what we have is okay for the connected leg and this is for the outstanding leg so if you just try to check the uh, kind of connection that we have here so that is the gusset plate that we are trying to have here and if you just try to look at the angle so you are trying to have the angle something like this okay so that is the angle that is placed here so obviously you can understand that this okay right that is a gusset plate so that is a connecting leg and that is the outstanding leg outstanding leg correct so the first term that we are trying to talk about in this particular case happens to be with respect to the connecting leg okay and this is with respect to the outstanding leg okay so the strength of this plus this that should be equal to the net strength okay of that particular section okay so let's try to see this particular case so obviously we have the uh, ultimate stress multiplied by the net area of the connected uh, part okay divided by gamma m1 1.25 and then again you're trying to reduce it by another 10 percent that is 0.9 correct so that's how you calculate the okay tensile carrying capability that is this net rupture strength okay of the connected leg obviously there would be some kind of uh, uh, there would be some kind of opening over there okay there would be some kind of uh, opening over there correct in this particular case okay there would be some reduction in area and for the gross uh, for the outstanding leg you are trying to take the gross area so gross area multiplied by yield strength divided by gamma m0 that is 1.1 uh, 1 .1, okay and then beta okay now let's try to see what this beta is now beta is computed from this particular uh, uh, I mean uh, expression so beta is 1.4 minus 0 0.076 times the ratio of w by t what is w w is the length of the out, uh, outstanding leg okay in this case it happens to be 75 and t is the thickness of the leg which happens to be 8 mm f y and f u are the uh, yield strength uh, and, and the ultimate strength of the given material which is 250 and 400 megapascal and b s is nothing but that shear lag length okay which we are just trying to explain okay and l c is the length of the connection which is nothing but the distance from the first bolt to the last bolt 
correct? So let's try to see all those things. And one important thing that you need to understand is, okay, the whatever value that we compute, okay, for this particular expression, with this particular expression, correct, should lie between, okay, these two values, right? That is 0.7 and uh, you have to compute this value. That is fu into gamma m0 by fy into gamma m1, correct? You have to ensure that this whatever value that you just try to compute here, okay, should lie between these two, okay? If it falls outside that, then you have to restrict it. I make clear. So, the maximum upper value of beta is this and the minimum upper value or lower value of beta is this particular value. So, let us try to first uh, calculate these values that is uh, so that I can calculate uh, beta here. So, we just try to check here. So, the value of uh, f y is given, okay. The value of f y is given 250, this is 400, gamma m 1 is 1.25, gamma m 0 is 1.10 and uh, w I did tell you, okay. So, this is w, correct. So, this distance right from here to here, right is w, correct that is length of the outstanding width that is 75. So, that is 75 and thickness, okay. The thickness of this leg is 8, okay. So, this one 8 mm, you can clearly see that number over there. And now, this is important BS, okay. Let me just try to explain to you what BS is in this particular case, correct. So, the value of BS in this particular case, right, okay, is right from, okay, this point to this point. Correct. So, distance from the last part point of the outstanding leg to the first uh, uh, center line of the first bolt line. Correct. Center line of the first bolt line. So, let us try to come all the way from here to here that would be 75 and again you have to travel from here to here that would be another 60, another 60 and in the process please understand you would have accounted the thickness of the, uh, of the uh, leg two times correct, one in this direction and in the other direction also. So, I have to detect one thickness, correct. So, you can clearly see here 75, okay. So, that would be this number, okay. And then 60, that would be this value and then you are trying to deduct one thickness, okay. One thickness and that should give you the value of 127, okay. Distance from here to here, that is the shear lag width, correct. Divided by length of the connection, correct, right. BS by LC, length is, okay, distance from here to here. Correct. So, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Correct. So, 50 into 5, that would be 250. Okay. So, we have all the information, okay, to be substituted in that expression for beta and if you substitute that value, okay, the value of beta that I have got in this case is 1.17. Correct. And we need to understand that it should lie between two values 0 0.7 and 1.41. Correct. Right. So, we have substituted the values of f i, f u, gamma m 1 and gamma m 0. Correct. So, that is the value that we have got, okay. So, since the value of uh, beta computed 1.17 lies between the two values, okay, we just try to take the value of beta as 1.17, okay. If, take, if it had exceeded this, you have to limit it to 1.41. If it is less than this, we have to limit it to 0.7. In this case, okay, we would be trying to use that particular value, okay, for the next computation, correct. Now, uh, uh, when we just try to talk about the next part is, okay, we have to even calculate Okay, the gross, uh, I mean, uh, the, the net area of the connected leg and the gross area of the out and outstanding leg, correct. So, please understand when we say net area, so we have to deduct this opening that we have here, opening, correct. So, how do we calculate that, okay. So, please understand, okay, the distance, the, the length of this leg is 100, that is 100, distance is 100, correct. So, you can just try to say 100 multiplied by thickness, what is the thickness? 8 mm, correct. Is it all right? So, we are going to say that is uh, okay or you can just try to even uh, deduct, okay, the, the uh, from the width, the opening and then we can just try to multiply by thickness. So, this is nothing but 100, okay and then if you just try to look at uh, the whole diameter. So, please understand the diameter of the hole is 22, that is 2 mm in excess of the diameter of the bolt. The diameter of the bolt given is uh, 20, so it is 20 plus 2, it is 22. So, this is 22, correct. I make clear. So, from 100 you deduct the width of the uh, bolt hole that would be 22 and then please understand here, okay, you have to uh, um, uh, uh, deduct half of the thickness over here because, okay, we, we normally account half to this leg and half to the other leg, correct. So, this is the half thickness, okay, that I am trying to deduct at this point and that is the uh, uh, width of the hole. So, that will give you the net length in this direction, 
okay, multiplied by the thickness that is 8, okay, over here, that should give you the area of the connected leg. All you need to understand is we have deducted that area of the opening, that is all, correct? Is it all right? You got this. Now, coming to outstanding leg, it is a very simple exercise. So, it is nothing but 75, again minus half thickness, correct? So, in either direction, both the directions, you have to deduct half thickness, okay? So, it is 75 minus 4, correct? So, 75 minus 4 or 8 by 2 multiplied by thickness, that should give you, that should give you the area of the uh, outstanding leg, okay? This leg. Now, having got that particular value, you can just try to substitute back in that expression and then get the value of TDN and the value of TDN, okay, based on the second failure criteria, correct? Based on the second failure criteria, okay, is nothing but 321.53 kilonewtons. Is it all right? So, please understand this procedure is almost the same, okay, as that of the plate problem, but only thing is this expression, okay, for beta that is and all those things. How do we calculate TDN is slightly different to the one that we use for plates, correct? So, this is the second uh, uh, I mean uh, uh, estimate that we have made. That means, assuming that it may fail in uh, by rupture, okay, net section rupture. Now, we will go to the third criteria. The third criteria that we are trying to talk about in this particular case is the block shear failure, block shear failure, correct? So, that means, the connection itself, okay, is going to fail. Right? The first failure was yielding of gross section. So, we assume that okay, it may fail somewhere over there, okay, that is well beyond the connection. And the second one is net rupture. So, that means at some critical section, correct, okay, it may give away, correct, that is how we assumed. Okay, now, the third kind of failure that we are trying to talk about is the connection itself can fail. So, this is what we call as the block shear failure, correct, block shear failure. So, let us try to understand okay, how we are trying to compute this block shear failure. Now, first thing is you need to identify how the failure occurs in this particular case. So, we just try to recollect, we had said that the failure path okay, is taken along the bolt lines, along the bolt lines. So, just try to check these are the bolt holes, these are the bolt holes. So, please understand the failure is going to initiate like that, along the bolt holes like that, correct? Since there is no further bolt here, so it stops here and then either it should take a left turn or right turn, correct? If it has to take a right turn, please understand we are going to outstanding leg, correct? So, all the way it has to come here and then go up to the outstanding leg, okay, for this part to, to separate out, okay, from the main angle. So, the, the easier path would be that, correct? So, that means please understand this small portion, okay, that you are trying to see over here, right, okay? Can, will become, will separate and then this particular part will fly off because you are trying to apply a tensile force here, right? Once the crack goes like this, this piece, okay, right, will just get disconnected with the section and it is going to come away, correct, is what you need to understand. So, let us try to look at the failure that we have written, okay, the failure that we have written. So, we just try to check here, right, this is how the failure, okay, looks like, correct. So, it has got disconnected and this is how the failure, okay, looks like. Am I make clear? So, this piece, okay, which I just mentioned, correct, which I just mentioned, right, okay, right. So, this portion, correct, is written here. So, I hope you have understood, right. So, everything, all these dimensions are here, okay, that is 40, right, 40. So, all those things, information are available. An important thing here is, okay, when we just talk about this failure, Okay, so normally we have okay what are called as shear planes and tensile planes. That means okay whenever a failure has to occur, it could be due to shear or it could be due to tension. Am I clear? So failure criteria could be either due to shear or due to tensile stress. Correct. Now just try to check here. So the force is in this direction. Force is in this direction. So we just try to check here, right? So that that's how the force acts. So you can easily understand that this one a B, correct, is the shear plane. That is the shear plane because this force is acting on the surface of that failure plane. Whereas, okay, we just try to check this, the, the other one that we are trying to talk about, okay, this plane, correct. So, we have, we have the force in this direction, okay, the force, okay, to be acting in this direction, force is acting in this direction. So, on this plane BC, it is acting normal to the section. So, that means the force is tensile. I make clear tensile stress. So, we are going to identify this plane A B, okay, as the shear plane, correct, and B C, okay, as the tension plane, 
correct so whenever we just talk about block share okay first identify the failure path and when you just try to identify the failure path you will recognize that there would be shear uh, uh, failure planes and tensile failure planes which you have to identify properly so in this case so this one okay the plane okay in the direction failure plane or failure path in the direction of the axial faults okay is, is identified as shear plane and the failure path normal to the direction of the force applied or the stress developed okay is called as the tensile planes correct so we have just identified okay these planes over here correct that is the failure and shear planes okay now let's try to go ahead and then calculate uh, four important areas and here there are only two failure planes in this particular case if you just try to quickly recollect in case of plate problems we had talked about three failure planes correct okay so two shear failure planes and then one tensile failure plane correct here there's only one shear uh, failure plane and only one tensile failure plane i make clear and these planes are perpendicular as you can clearly see okay so ac and BC are mutually perpendicular, correct? Now, my next task is to calculate the area, okay, along the shear plane as well as area along the tensile plane. Now, in each of these planes, okay, we are trying to talk about two different areas. The first one, correct, is the gross area. That means uh, without accounting any deductions. And the next one is the net area after accounting the deduction of those holes correct bolt holes correct so we are just trying to talk about the gross area ab as well as the net area ab and again gross area in bc and net area in bc correct is what you need to understand and accordingly we are going to call it as okay there is avg avn v stands for shear and the next one is the tensile that is atg and atn so let's try to first start start with avg correct avg so v stands for shear and g for gross Gross means without deducting any uh, uh, bolt hole openings, correct? So, what is the distance from A to B, correct? Total distance without deducting any opening. So, that would be 30 plus 50 plus 50 plus 50 plus 50 plus 50, correct? That would be 280, 280. Then the thickness of the plate, correct? Is it uh, that angle, right? Okay, is 8 millimeters, thickness of the angle, 8 mm. So, 200, mul 280 multiplied by 80, okay, that will give you the uh, 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 gross area on the shear plane. Now we'll go to the net area, correct? So the next one is, okay, AVN. So V stands for shear, N stands for net. So earlier we said the distance is 280. So from 280, you have to deduct these bolt hole openings. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, when you just talk about the 6th, it is only half. It is only half. So you have to deduct 5.5 times the bolt hole diameter correct bolt hole bolt diameter is 20 bolt hole is 22 so we are going to account okay 280 minus 280 is the length minus 5.5 times 22 correct so that will give the net length correct net length multiplied by thickness will give you correct a uh, v uh, and that is a v uh, net a v n correct a v n so 280 minus 5.5 into 22, 5.5 uh, uh, bolt holes, okay, multiplied by the diameter of the hole, multiplied by thickness, that should give you the value of, okay, AVN. We do the same exercise even for the tensile planes. Look at the tensile plane, it's quite simple, okay, the length of this is 40. When you're talking about grass, you just take the entire value, 40 multiplied by 8, 8 is the thickness, correct? So we have 40 multiplied by 8, so we have the value of uh, ATG. T stands for tension plane and G for gross, correct, ATG. The next one is, okay, so ATN, net. So in this plane, okay, there's only half bolt hole that you have to deduct, half bolt hole. So there is 40 minus half of 22 or 0.5 into 22. That will give the net length, okay, over here, multiplied by thickness, 8, that will give you ATN. So you can clearly see here, 40 minus 0.5, half of 22, okay, multiplied by thickness, that should give you the value of, okay, ATN, net, okay, is what you, I think this is repeated, right, okay, I think there are some numbers change, correct, so anyway, this is fine, okay, I think one of the two values, this is not correct, I think this value is fine, 232, okay, 232, right, so this is how you simply calculate the values of, uh, okay, that is AVG, A, 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 V, N, correct, ATG and ATN, a very simple exercise that we have here, okay. Now, having done this, we substitute this, correct? Now, look at this, we have got clause 641. 
So, you have to just understand these clauses, right? So, they are all in section 6, okay? Once you are familiar, you do not need to remember any of these expressions, okay? They are all available in uh, IS 800 2007. You have to just open out section 6, okay? And then zero in on these uh, uh, expressions, substitute and get the values, correct? So, we have calculated A, B, G, A, T, N in the previous slide. F, Y, F, U values are given in the problem, okay? Gamma M0 and gamma M1 are given in the problem. Substitute simplify, you get the value of TDB. Now, as you un, as you are aware, okay, we try to calculate this block share strength, okay? That is, there is, yeah, there is failure due to block share under two criteria, correct? Criteria one and criteria two, correct? So from criteria one, this is what we have here. Now in criteria two, okay, we have a different expression, correct? Different expression, very similar to that, but different expression. Again, given in the code. So again, we are trying to have here AVN and ATG. So here we used Okay, gross area for shear, here you are using the net area. Here we use the net area for tension, we are trying to use the gross area. And accompanied by that, we have got the appropriate uh, uh, stress, it could be ultimate or yield and again appropriate PSFs. So all you have to just do is take these uh, expressions, substitute and get the value. So here the value of TDB1 and TDB2 are given. That means, okay, under this criteria, that is the tensile force, sh fa failure tensile force in block shear. Under this failure criteria, this condition, okay, that is a failure criteria. So we normally pick the least of the two. We pick the least of the two, okay. So least of the two, okay, in this particular case happens to be 284. So the value of uh, 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 I mean, uh, design strength, okay, with respect to block shear failure, okay, is the least of the two, which happens to be 284.23 kN. Now, if you just try to recollect, okay, we said that, okay, we are assuming that the, the, the uh, uh, connection is going to fail under three different modes of failures. And assuming each mode of failure, we have just calculated these values individually. So, let us try to summarize that, okay. So, we just try to check here. So, we had assumed uh, the gross, uh, I mean, uh, yielding and that is what we had got. The net yielding, this is the value and block share is the value. Correct. So, all you have to do is you have to just write all those things and take the least of these values, least of these values. Obviously, the least of this is uh, due, to block, uh, due to the uh, block share failure, the connection failure, which is 288.23 and we are just trying to say that, look, okay, the, the uh, failure criteria, okay, is due to TD, uh, I mean, in this case, okay, uh, it is not TDB, correct, TDB, which is 288.23 kilonewton. Correct? So, pick the least of that and then say that that is the uh, uh, actual design strength of that particular uh, connection, given connection. I hope you understood this procedure. We are just trying to use the same procedure, okay? We had used the same procedure even when we had solved problems in plates, correct? This is for angles, okay, with that small change with respect to that, uh, uh, I mean, uh, net uh, rupture, okay? I hope you can easily manage even with such kind of examples. So, let us try to go to the next example that we have here, a very similar one, correct, very similar one, but in this case, okay, we have not given how many bolts, okay, that we should have here. We are going to calculate the number of bolts required in this particular case and again, okay, check, okay, uh, and, and try to come out with uh, the design strength of this particular connection. So, if here again, we are trying to have, uh, okay, and in this case, it, there are two angles back to back. Correct. In the, in the previous case, there was a single angle. Now, we are trying to talk about two angles back to back. Look at this. So, we have got 75, 75, 6 on one side of the gazette and another side. Again, it is 75 by, okay, 75 by 6, 75 by 6, correct. And that is the gazette plate that we have here, correct. So, equal leg angle. Last time, we had taken unequal leg angle. Here, it is equal leg angle. 75, 75, 6. This is 75. Again, that is 75. Correct. So, two, uh, a tie bracing system consists of two angles, okay, 75, 75, 6, bolted to a 10 mm thick gusset plate, correct, on either side, correct. And we are trying to have a single row of bolts. That means you are trying to see the sectional elevation here. So, got number of bolts behind this, correct, one beside the other. So, determine the tensile capacity of the member and the number of bolts required, okay, to uh, develop the full capacity. First thing is you need to understand what, what may be the tensile force of this particular connection and to, to see that that develops, okay, we, are, we have to find the, we have to provide enough number of bolts, correct? And the yield strength, 
okay, and the ultimate strength of the material are given. I hope you understood the problem. The only difference here is okay, we have two angles instead of one angle and in the previous case the, the bolts, number of bolts were specified, six everything, but in this case okay, we are going to calculate even that okay, with respect to the data that is given here. So, this slide is the same that means we are trying to do this problem okay, in a very similar sense in the sense that uh, we are trying to assume three different failure criteria and then we are just trying to uh, calculate the uh, failures under all these three criteria. So, let us start with the first one. I think the first one is very similar that means gross section yielding. So, we are just trying to talk about the plus 6.2. So, Td is equal to Fiag by gamma m, m, m 0 correct. So, in this particular case the only thing that you need to understand is okay, you have to take two times okay, the angle. Okay. Why? Because there are two angles in this particular case. So, area of one angle is 866, area of one angle 75, 75, 6 okay, is uh, 866. There are two angles, you need to multiply by two times. Okay. You get the total area okay, of both the angles. Now, please understand when we just talk about gross section yielding, okay, we are trying to say that this failure occurs okay, at some distance away from the connection. So, there will be no bolt holes anything. Okay, so, the entire section okay, is going to fail by yielding, gross cross section yielding. Okay. So, you just try to take the entire area okay, multiplied by the yielding stress and then divide by the PSF, okay, you get the value of TDG. So, it is a very simple straightforward way of calculating the uh, design strength due to yielding, I mean gross, uh, gross, yeah, gross yielding and with no time you can finish this part of the problem. Correct? Now, coming to the next one. Okay. Now, this is slightly different. Now, we just try to look at this. Okay, this expression is different in the sense that okay, we do not have those beta etcetera coming up in the equation. So, we said if you just try to quickly recollect in the previous slide, we said Tdn equal to okay, there is a contribution from the connected leg plus contribution from the outstanding leg. Okay, when you are using that particular formula, correct? so the bold details everything should be available. Correct. So, in this case we do not have any information with respect to the bolt holes. In such circumstance please understand okay, in class 633, class 633 okay, another equation okay, is given suggested in IS 800 okay, 2007 okay, where you can just try to estimate okay, the design strength due to net uh, section rupture, right? net rupture right? okay, by, an, uh, by an expression okay, which is a simplified expression in this particular case. What do we have here? Alpha A n F u by gamma m 1 correct. Okay? So, this is the net area, this is nothing but the ultimate stress and gamma m 1. F u and gamma m 1 are given correct, F u and gamma 1 are given correct. Right? This is nothing but uh, uh, if I am correct should be 400 and that should be something like 1.25 okay? or 410 in 1.25 that is given. Now, let us try to understand what is said about alpha. Okay? It is a number, it is a fraction that we are trying to talk about and that depends on the number of bolt holes. Now, look at this. Okay? In this particular case, we are trying to assume that okay, there would be 5 numbers okay, of 20 mm diameter bolt. The first thing is I am assuming the bolt diameter will be 20 mm. Correct? Okay, I am assuming. Okay, let us try to use 20 mm diameter bolt bolts. Correct? So, 20 mm diameter bolts is what we are trying to talk about. So, please understand that okay, based on that the value of alpha gets fixed. Okay, right? So, it, the code says that if the value of uh, bolt, if the bolts are more or e more than or equal to 4 numbers, correct? 4 in number, okay, that value is 0 0.8. Correct? Is it all right? If it is less, you have got a different value of alpha. I make clear. All you have to just look at this particular class, correct? In this particular case, I am assuming five numbers, okay? And I am trying to take this value of alpha appropriately from the code. So I am just trying to talk about that. And further, since I have assumed 20 mm diameter bolt, I can easily calculate the net area of the section. I can easily calculate the net area of the section, correct? So how do I do that? Okay. So 866, correct? 866 is nothing but the area of one angle. Area of one angle. Correct. I am just trying to deduct this area. I am going to deduct this area, right? Okay, in one leg. Okay, what is the uh, area loss due to that hole? Correct. How do I get this? It is the value of the bolt hole diameter. Bolt is 20. Bolt hole would be 22. So 22 multiplied by thickness. Okay, which is nothing but six. And please understand, we got two numbers. We got two numbers is what here. So 22 into six. Okay. So 22 is the width. Okay, of the bolt hole multiplied by the, the thickness that gives the area that we have lost due to that hole. 
correct from this entire angle correct from this entire angle correct is it all right and this is two times because there are two angles that we have okay in this particular connection so that will give you okay 1468 millimeter square so that will be the net area so all you need to understand here is okay so once you have assumed the bolt a uh, hole bolts correct you can easily calculate the net area of the section so if you have done this i think then the matter is substituting all these numbers and then we are trying to get the value of uh, tdn tdn in this particular case happens to be 385.20 kilonewtons 385.20 kiloton now the most important thing that we are now trying to talk about is okay designing the bolts designing the bolts so that means okay so i know what is the capacity i know what is the capacity correct so this due to net rupture okay this is the force okay that it that that, that particular connection should have now the next part is how many bolts are required to take up this particular value now the first important thing that you need to understand is okay this bolt right this bolt whatever you're trying to have here right is under double shear why is it under double shear so assume that this is your gusset plate that is your gusset plate okay this is one angle okay that is one leg of the angle that is the other leg of the angle correct you can clearly see there are three thicknesses okay angle gusset plate and angle correct so we have got the angle gusset plate and angle and there is a bolt that we have here so when you just try to pull this correct when the force is applied so please understand okay the bolt is going to fail okay at two places correct it's going to shear off okay at two places and hence we call it as double shear okay it's going to fail uh, i mean due to two shearing planes okay this is the first thing that you need to understand however if if there were to be only one angle if there were to be only one angle okay so this is not there there will be only one shear plane okay so the bolt will fail in single shear so you need to understand this properly okay because when you are trying to arrive at the bolt uh, uh, value right okay so we have to account it properly so please understand first thing that we have talked about is it's going to fail uh, in bolt uh, in, in double shear and the next thing is we are trying to calculate the capacity of the bolt okay in uh, shear as well as bearing okay so there will be two criteria i think you have learned this okay in the earlier uh, discussion on bolts i'm just trying to go through this uh, once again so i'm just trying to calculate uh, the uh, single shear value of the bolt okay so vsb that is a and b into f u b by root 3 gamma m b so you can easily get this value and with respect to this the uh, i mean uh, bolt value okay in single shear is 45.26 kilonewton right i hope you are familiar with this particular expression right this has been covered to you okay in the discussion of uh, bolted joints correct now we have done this in single shear now obviously okay uh, in double shear we are going to increase that later correct so that means okay now this is in bearing i'm sorry this is in bearing right so this is in bearing correct right that's in bearing okay so that is uh, bearing we have a different expression 2.5 kb dt f u by gamma mb correct so the value of kb correct in this particular case is 0 0.5 which is taken as the least of these three ratios correct right and one you compute according to these three ratios and then pick the least and you get the value of kb as 0 0.5 in this particular case correct so that means kb is known correct now coming to d correct it is uh, 20 millimeters that is the diameter of the uh, hole that we are trying to uh, diameter of the bolt that we are trying to have here and t is nothing but the thickness now there are two things that we are trying to have here one is the thickness of the plate and the thickness of the two angles please understand okay when you when you try to take this thickness it should be the least of either the gazette or and the summation of the two angles the gazette is 10 the summation of the angles is 6 plus 6 12 the least is 10 i think we have to take the value of uh, uh, i mean a t as 10 mm this is important for you correct so there are three plates correct one is the gazette and the two angles okay now the two angles resist the force together as you know correct please understand what is the thickness of the two angles it is 6 plus 6 12 what is the thickness of the gusset it is 10 mm so which is smaller 10 or 12 it is 10 so that value has to be taken here so f u b correct gamma m b they are all known and hence you can easily get the value of v p b correct v p b right so the the, the the small of the two is 45.26 in this particular case correct 45.26 right and you can easily uh, uh, understand that okay the the uh, small of the two is 45.6 and further that's in double shear 
right? You just try to increase that and then the value is 90.52 kilonewtons, okay? So that means, please understand, okay, the bolt value is 90.52. That means each bolt, okay, can give you, okay, a strength of 90.52 kilonewtons. I make clear? So we know what is the uh, uh, design strength of that particular failure and we know each bolt can resist how much force. So it's a very simple exercise to calculate the number of bolts, correct? So we just try to understand this, right? Okay. So the strength of the connection obviously should be more than the strength of the member, correct? In this particular case, correct? So number of bolts required, okay, is nothing but the value of uh, uh, strength divided by value of the bolt, that is 90.52, that is 4.26, correct? Because you have got a fraction here, I'm just trying to take a higher number, that is five numbers. So you need to understand that we are trying to have five bolts, correct, in this particular case. So we just try to take five bolts, each bolt is something like 90, so that would be totally 450. So please understand, so the strength of the connection obviously is more than the strength of the member. Strength of the member is only 385.20. Correct? If I'm using five bolts, each bolt can give you 90.52 kilonewton force, can resist. Okay? So the total strength of the connection is something like 450, which is definitely more than the strength of the member. And that's what we want here. Correct? And finally, okay, we are trying to assume okay, from class 10 to 2, okay, the edge okay, and end distances to be 35 mm and the pitch to be 50 mm. Correct? So we can assume these things so that my connection is complete. Okay? That is, the detailing of the connection is complete. So this is what we have in net section rupture. Now we go to the uh, block shear failure, okay, block shear failure. So again, when you just talk about block shear failure, the concept is the same as we have discussed in the previous case. So this is how the connection looks like. And first thing is you have to identify the failure path. How did I tell you to identify the failure path? You start along the bolt holes, correct? So the failure path progresses like this, progresses like this up to the last bolt hole correct, from this direction, and then either it is, should take a left turn or a right turn, correct, right, like that or like that with respect to the direction of the path, correct. Now, if, I, if it has to take the right turn, please understand we have got a, okay, this is the outstanding leg, that is the outstanding leg, it has to come here and all the way go up in that particular direction. The so path length is more, you require more force. So, however, this is a shorter, okay, way of uh, uh, path length and then it fails like that. So please understand, once this part gets disconnected, this is how it looks like, okay, as we had explained, okay, AB is the shear plane that we have here and this is the tension plane, correct? So all details are available for us, correct? So that means, okay, so the pitch length, the end distance, the edge distance, so everything is available, okay? So two planes, okay, shear plane, tension plane, both are mutually perpendicular. So for each plane, we just try to calculate the gross area and the net area correct, in this particular case. So let us try to calculate this, okay. So let us try to see, okay, what do we have here? AVG, so AVG is what? Okay, gross area on the shear plane. So AB is the shear plane, correct. So what is the length from here to here, okay? 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 200 plus 35, 235, okay, multiplied by the thickness. Thickness is what? 6 millimeters. So we got 235 into 6, okay, that will give you the gross area, okay, in shear. How do you calculate the net area, okay? So we have to deduct the uh, diameter of the bolt holes. So how many bolt holes? 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, 0.5. So 4.5. So diameter of each hole, okay, is 22. 20 plus 2, 20 is the bolt hole uh, diameter, bolt, bolt diameter, 2 mm in excess, okay, 22. So we try to take, okay, so there is from 235 total width, you will deduct 4.5 times 22 multiplied by thickness, that should give you AVN, net area. I make clear, did you understand? In shear plane, right? So we've calculated the gross area, net area along the shear plane. Now we repeat that for the gross, for, for the tension plane. So tension plane, total length is 35 into 6, that will be the gross. For net, you have to deduct half bolt hole, 35 minus 0 0.522 into 6, that will give you ATN, okay? So you can clearly see ATG is just 35 into 6, whereas ATN, you have to deduct, okay, 22 by 2, correct? 11 mm, half of that, okay, into 6, okay, thickness, so that should give you the value of, okay, the net area in tension plate. So we've calculated the gross area, we've calculated the net area along both, uh, I mean, uh, uh, failure planes, that is shear plane and uh, uh, tension planes. So now we have two expressions, 
uh, coming up, two expressions coming up from cross 641. Coming to the first expression, correct, okay, the value of uh, uh, critical value is 227.52. As you can clearly see here, we have got two terms, correct, one for shear plane, one for tension plane. In this case, we are trying to take the grass area for tension plane and net area for shear plane and understand whenever we are talking about grass, correct, is it all right, we always talk about the yield and corresponding value of uh, uh, PSF. When you just talk about net, we always take the ultimate and the appropriate value of uh, PSF, okay. Anyway, we got this value. So, th this expression is available in the code, okay. You just try to take it up and then substitute. Now, we got expression 2 coming up. So, from expression 2, okay, where we try to reverse from gross to net and from net to gross, okay, with appropriate PSFs, etc., okay. These, co these uh, uh, things are available in the code take those values and again you got a, another value for uh, TD, uh, TD, uh, I mean the TB2, okay, TB2 which is 186.10. So, from criteria 1 and criteria 2 got two different values. So, we are going to pick the least of the two, obviously it is 186.80, uh, correct, is what we are trying to have here. And please understand, okay, these calculations, whatever we have been doing here, okay, we just try to look at this, we have done from choosing one angle, okay. We have just taken one angle, we have calculated these values. Since there are two angles that we have here, correct, so we have just multiplied that by 2. So, the uh, total, uh, I mean, uh, force required to make this member fail in block shear happens to be 373.60 kN. Correct. Now, the last one is we just tried to compare the three failure criteria: criteria 1, criteria 2 and criteria 3. Criteria 1, gross yielding, correct, 393.64, okay, then net section rupture, that is 385.20 and we have, I mean, designed enough number of bolts, we have said 5, we have done that in that case and then block, uh, I mean, block shear failure end connection, 373.60 kN. So, just try to compare the two and obviously you can notice that TDB is the least that we have here. So, we are going to conclude that, okay, the uh, I mean, uh, failure in this particular case happens to be uh, 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 due to block shear value and uh, it is 373.60 kN, right. So, this is about uh, problem 2, right. I hope you have, uh, 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 you have understood the procedure completely, right. So, I have just uh, introduced you two different uh, types of problems, okay, connect with uh, bolted uh, uh, a ten connection in case of a tension member. I hope this presentation was uh, uh, quite uh, clear and useful to you, right. So, I think uh, with this we will close, okay, this uh, presentation, okay, and then we will just try to uh, take up different examples, right, in the next presentation, okay. So, thank you, okay, we will just try to come back soon and then we will just try to catch up with uh, more examples in design of tension members.